Okay, well, welcome everyone. Today's Common Turk seminar is by Sam Hopkins. He's at the University of Minnesota and he will be talking about order polynomial product formulas and postnet dynamics. Take it away. Thank you very much. And um, thanks for the opportunity to speak here and thanks for everyone for coming. Uh, I don't know if we all had, you know, late nights or there's a lot going on, but um, it's nice to see many faces. Um, so yeah, my talk, there's the title, Order Polynomial Product Formulas and Post-it Dynamics. Um, this is kind of going to be an overview of some things, a bunch of different things that I've been thinking about lately that are linked together by some kind of heuristic I've developed. But um, let me start with a very broad um, kind of slide. So there's maybe... This is oversimplifying things, but there's a there's kind of two approaches in math. You can study um, general objects, like maybe all algebraic varieties, all polytopes, something like that. Or you can maybe be very interested in a particular object, like maybe you have one PDE, one um, differential equation that you're very interested in. You want to know everything about this. Um, and uh, this talk is very much going to be on the side of the particular. So I'm going to be looking for special examples of things, particular um, special objects. <clears throat> so what are the objects that I'm interested in? Um, they're finite posets, partially ordered sets. Um, <clears throat> so probably to this crowd, I don't need to spend so much time justifying the study of posets. But anyways, let me just say that they are a unifying theme in modern uh, enumerative and algebraic combinatorics. So for instance, you know, Stanley's two volume textbook post-sets feature extremely prominently. Um, so I'll usually represent post-sets via their Hasse diagrams. So um, that has the vertices are the elements of the post-set and the edges represent cover relations with one element above another if it's greater than that element. Uh, but I'll be particularly focused on um, young diagram shapes and shifted shapes as examples of posets. So um, hopefully people have seen like young diagrams before. So those are just uh, corresponding to partitions. They're left justified and upper right justified boxes. Um, and shifted shapes are, are similar to young diagrams, but I kind of indent by one every row. Um, anyways, um, they, they have a natural partial order on them where the upper leftmost box is the minimal element. So there's kind of an unfortunate clash of convention here where this is like the English way of drawing um, Young diagrams. And maybe it justifies what's called like Russian convention for Young diagrams where you put the minimal thing down there. But anyways, uh, hopefully it'll be clear from context what the poset that I'm talking about is. <clears throat> so um, as I mentioned, this is kind of an overview of a um, heuristic that I've been thinking about for a couple of years now. Uh, and it's a heuristic for finding special examples of, of posets. Uh, the heuristic says that the posets which exhibit good dynamical behavior um, are the same as the posets with order polynomial product formulas. So I'm going to explain throughout the talk in more detail what all of the terms here are, um, I guess, except for posets maybe. But um, let me just say right now that the order polynomial is a certain invariant of a, of a poset. Meanwhile, um, the good dynamical behavior means, well, good behavior of certain um, operators acting on objects associated to the poset. In particular, what is called promotion of linear extensions. That's a certain action kind of on a set, um, namely the set of linear extensions of the poset. And, and similarly, if I have time, um, row motion of order ideals or p partitions, which again, this is an action, like a cyclic group action on a combinatorial set. And um, good. Dynamical behavior means that these are very regular actions. We can understand them precisely. And they have good, maybe they have good algebraic models and so on. 
yeah, so the rest of the talk will be an explanation of this heuristic and the examples it produces. <clears throat> so let me start off by talking about order polynomials and uh, product formulas. Okay, so I'm going to start by kind of um, explaining the first example of uh, order polynomials. So uh, what are plane partitions? So an A by B plane partition is an A by B array of non-negative integers, which is weakly decreasing in rows and columns. Um, and I'll use um, PP super M to denote the set of uh, 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 PP super M of A times B to denote the set of A by B plane partitions whose entries are all at most M. Okay, so here I'm depicting an element of PP five, two times four. So it's a two by four array of numbers between zero and M, that's the maximum, and it weakly decreases in rows and columns. So five is um, greater than or equal to five and to two and so on. And here's um, a really beautiful formula of McMahon, uh, maybe one of the most celebrated formulas in you know, enumerative algebraic combinatorics. So it's, um, McMahon's generating function of, of plane partitions in a box. Uh, so it, it's a formula for the number of, um, of, of elements in the set PPM of A times B, but it's actually even better than that. It's like a Q analog, it's a generating function. So if I sum over all plane partitions in this set, um, Q to the size of my plane partition pi, where the size means the sum of all of the entries, uh, then I get this explicit um, product formula, so a rational expression using involving uh, this parameter q. Um, if you take the limit as q goes to one, then you recover a, a product formula for just enumerating this set. And yeah, it's really beautiful because um, it's not clear at all that there should be a simple formula counting these things. But um, why is it called the formula for plane partitions in a box? Well, um, there are many representations of plane partitions. Um, one of them is um, as uh, stackings of unit cubes inside of a rectangular box. Um, so here I'm trying to sort of depict that um, correspondence. Um, so if I have a five in the upper left corner, that means I have five kind of boxes stacked up all together. And the rules the boxes have to obey is that they're sort of all shoved as much as they can into, into one corner. Um, so if you think about the kind of bound on the height and the dimensions of the, of the array, that, that gives me a, a box that my stacking has to fit into. Um, so that's how I get this picture. <clears throat> But then if you look at this picture and, and you sort of forget that you're looking at a three-dimensional picture, you can pretend you're looking at a, a two-dimensional picture, which is um, what's called a Lagens tiling. So the Lagens are, are these blue, red, and I guess light blue um, rhombuses. And um, they tile this hexagonal region. And um, via this kind of correspondence, the study of plane partitions is also and then it's connected to the dimer model in statistical mechanics. So lozenges are a particular instance of dimers, which are, again, a model that physicists like to study in statistical mechanics. <clears throat> uh, a sort of another um, way that plane partitions come up is in the representation theory of, of classical groups, because the set PPM A times B, uh, it can be thought of as indexing a basis of irreducible representation of, um, say, the special linear Lie algebra A plus B um, with highest weight M to the A. So some kind of like rectangular shaped um, partition as my weight. Yeah, so there's a lot of guises of plane partitions. I'm not sure how much McMahon knew about all of this at the time, but anyways, they became a really popular topic after he kind of developed the theory 100 years ago. <clears throat> um, so that's what plane partitions are. And what are P partitions? Well, if P is a poset, then uh, a P partition is um, kind of the natural extension of the idea of, of plane partition. It's a weekly order reversing map 
from my poset p to the non-negative integers. And again, I can um, use this notation pp super m to denote the set of uh, p partitions whose, whose entry is bounded by m. So they have entries, they have numbers between zero and m. They're just ways of labeling my poset with numbers between zero and m that respect the partial order. And then the um, order polynomial omega p of m of p is um, the function in m, which counts the size of this set, the number of p partitions with entries at most m. And it, well, some basic facts is it turns out to be a polynomial uh, in m of degree the number of elements of my poset, its leading coefficient is e of p over size of p factorial, where um, this e of p is the number of linear extensions of my poset, which are total orderings, which extend the partial order. Um, I guess maybe another thing I should mention, which I just talked about in the pre-seminar, is that it's, the, it's also an Earhart polynomial of, a, of the order polytope of the poset. So. Um, so, sorry, um, it, it was weak uh, in the pre-seminar. I, I don't remember it being defined as weakly order reversing. I thought it was strictly. Um, no, the inequalities are all less than or equal to. Uh, like I thought we defined it as order preserving bijections. Uh, that there, you're thinking of the linear extensions. Those are. Oh, okay. Um, right. Those are those are like. I have to choose a separate number for each, um, but here I'm I'm allowed to sort of repeat things. So it, so like especially like plane partitions are an instance of um, p partitions where the poset p is this kind of rectangular poset, um, actually the product of two chains. Okay, so the study of um, of this quantity e of p, the number of linear extensions of my poset. I mean. Many, many people are very interested in the number of linear extensions and, and in particular proving product formulas for that. So for instance, there's something called the hook length formula for young diagram shapes and shifted shapes. Um, maybe Igor Pock is the person in the world most interested in like the number of linear extensions of a poset. Um, it's just so a popular topic, but I'm gonna be focusing on a, on a so to speak, harder problem, or not harder, but like more restrictive problem, which is, which posets have product formulas for their entire order polynomials. So because just one coefficient of my order polynomial is the number of linear extensions, um, obviously it's gonna be a smaller class of posets which have product formulas for their order polynomials. <clears throat> so here's some examples of sort of, of known examples of, of order polynomial product formulas. So the rectangle shape, that's the one corresponding to plane partitions I was just talking about. It has an order polynomial due to McMahon. Um, here's another example, uh, shifted staircase shape. So all the examples I'm gonna talk about right now are, are either Young diagrams or shifted Young diagrams. Um, so the shifted staircase, again, it's not so important that you focus on any particular formula here, just the fact that we have a product formula. So it's a really nice formula in, in, in M. Um, so this, this formula for the number of linear extent, uh, sorry, the number of, of p partitions of shifted staircase shape was conjectured by McMahon in 1896 and, and only proved by um, sort of simultaneously and independently by Andrews and McDonald about 75 years later. Um, it's normally described in terms of sort of symmetry classes of plane partitions, which was a hot topic in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Um, so these are, are in obvious correspondence with um, symmetric plane partitions, but let me not get focused too much on symmetry classes. Um, but let me just also mention that um, just like the rectangle is somehow connected to special linear Lie algebra and its representations, the shifted staircase is um, sort of, it has some connection to the special orthogonal Lie algebra, SO2n plus one. Okay, then Proctor proved some nice um, product formulas for other similar classes of shapes and shifted shapes. So the staircase shape, the shifted trapezoid shape. Um, he gave, again, product formulas for the number of p partitions of, of these shapes. And uh, again, they correspond to certain symmetry classes of plane partitions, at least special cases of them do. 
And again, they're related to Lie algebra representations. In this case, um, they're kind of related to um, symplectic Lie algebra representations. <clears throat> so this is stuff that was done about you know 30 years ago or 20 years ago in the 80s. Um, wait, how long ago was that? 40 years? I don't know. Time like barely moves these these days. Um, so anyways, recently with tree lie, we found a sort of the first new family of postsets with the order polynomial product formulas since this work of Proctor, I guess. Um, so what are the postsets? Um, they're just, again, another family of shapes or shifted shapes, what we call the shifted double staircase shape. So you take kind of a shifted staircase shape and you paste another staircase on its side. It's a two parameter family in terms of N and K. And um, anyways, it, again, not so important that you focus on, on the particular formula, but here is the formula for the number of plane partitions of this shape. So for the order polynomial of this shape. Um, so how do we prove this formula? Uh, so well, we use the connect. Interrupt? Yeah. Can you, isn't that just the shifted tableau shape, like a, a shifted tableau shape when you left justified against the staircase there? And then all the parts are distinct. Um, oh, unless I'm just trying to figure out what's special about it. But if it's a double staircase, that means the thing on the right is not an arbitrary. Oh yeah, sorry. The thing on the right is a staircase, another a smaller sort of unshifted staircase, I guess. Yeah, that's right. So there's really just two parameters here, n and k, the size of my bigger staircase and the size of my smaller staircase. Yeah. Sam, can I ask a question too? Mm-hmm. So it seems somehow that the staircase shapes are important. Is there, does all of this fall apart that you don't get nice factorization formulas? You know, if you had just a um, a Young diagram, but it wasn't staircase shaped, if it sort of had decreases yeah. by two or more. That's right. right. If other, if you take a random Young diagram or a random shifted Young diagram, it's not going to have a nice product formula here. Although it does have a hook length formula for its number of linear extensions. So there's something very particular going on here. Um, which is somewhat mysterious and yeah, I don't know, but like why are, why is, in some sense, the heuristic that I was talking about I'm interested in is how do I find these shapes among all the shapes, the ones that have um, these special good properties? And there's kind of, yeah, you can come at it from either side, but. Um. Actually, that's a good question. How do you find that? Cause it's kind of hard to factor a number or a family of numbers in the rational product form. So did you did look I at- guess this formula? Yeah. Um, just from some examples, like figuring out, oh, you can find the roots of you know your polynomial and count them with multiplicity. And then if you do enough examples, it's not too hard to see in terms of N and K that this will be, yeah. So this is sort of just telling you that like all the roots are um, negative integers, which is really nice, I guess. <clears throat> and then can you qify this formula as well? That is a recent result of Suichi Okada, who I think is in the audience. Um, and I'll mention that in a second. Okay. Um, so first of all, let me mention, how do we prove this um, theorem? Uh, well, we use the connection to um, Lodgen's tilings of uh, the triangular lattice. So just like the sort of hexagon shape, um, it's Lodgen's tilings corresponded to plane partitions of uh, the uh, just the rectangle shape, right? Um, we have a certain region that is called the flashlight region. Um, and we kind of prove a, a more general theorem, which is that for this flashlight region, which has four parameters, x, y, z, and t, um, it has a product formula for its, its Lodgen's tilings. And um, the way we do this is basically using a, a known technique in Lagrange styling theory called quo condensation, which is basically just a powerful recurrence technique. Um, if you can ever sort of guess a formula like this for Lagrange tilings, usually you can prove it just for, by recurrent, you know, using a recursion. And um, we kind of follow some, actually Chuku proved a, um, a special case of this. Yeah, which we kind of built off of. Um, and in the case t equals zero, um, we get the result, like then we recover this result in the case t equals zero. Um, but it you, in the recurrence, you need to use higher values of t. 
So now, now let me mention um, two facts about this result, which are sort of even more interesting um, than the result itself. So this is what I was just mentioning. So Okada um, just recently proved a remarkable um, algebraic extension of the product formula, which uses um, the Lie group characters. So we didn't really um, find a connection to, yeah. So uh, it's, it's um, proving an identity of characters of, of Lie groups and their variants. And, and that suggests it has some deeper representation theoretic meaning, although I don't think it's totally understood why this factorization happens in, in representation theoretic terms. It's more proved using um, like identities of determinants and Fafians, but it does give a Q analog, which is what Steve asked about. <clears throat> um, and also the other thing that I find interesting about this result is how I found this poset and it was um, via the heuristic I mentioned, which relates product formulas and poset dynamics. Um, and I'll explain that in the next section, unless there are sort of other questions about this um, product formula business. Okay, so um, let me start with discussing some of the dynamics. Um, so standard Young tableau, hopefully we've seen these before, of a Young diagram shape lambda with n boxes are just um, bijective fillings of the boxes with the numbers one through n, which increase in rows and columns. And um, promotion is a certain action on the set of standard Young tableau of shape lambda which goes as follows. So here, I'm gonna show you an example as we go. Um, this is, a, I guess, the two by three rectangle shape standard Young tableau. So the first thing we do is we delete the entry of one. There's always a sort of entry of one in the upper left corner. And what we get is then a, um, a kind of tableau, but with a hole in it, which is this bullet here. Then we um, slide the boxes into the hole of the that we produced. And we do this in a way that maintains the standardness property. So if I were to slide the three up, that would violate standardness. But so, so I choose to slide the two left, then the four up, then the six left. And I've pushed my hole out to the outside. Um, after I do that, I decrement all of the entries. I, I just make them one lower and then the hole I'm gonna fill with the number six, the maximum value. And this always produces a new standard Young tableau of the same shape. Um, it's kind of a, a funny thing. Um, so first of all, promotion, I don't know, maybe you can imagine like, you know, you're, you're, you have a corporate organization and the boss gets, he either leaves or gets killed or something and everyone moves up one rank, right? That's kind of what's going on here. So that's maybe why it's called promotion. Um, but where does it come from? Well, um, together with evacuation, which is another um, operation on Tableau, actually in involution, these were first defined by Schutz and Berger because they are closely connected to the robinson schenstein knuth algorithm and symmetric function theory. <clears throat> um, there's also, okay, so the standard Young Tableau are the same thing as linear extensions of a, of a diagram shape. And the same kind of definition can be extended in a straightforward way to the linear extensions of any poset. Um, so we get a, an action of promotion on, on any poset, or, or rather the linear extensions of any poset. <laughs> um, and um, so for most shapes, the behavior of promotion is chaotic. Like we can't predict the order or the orbit structure. Um, but for certain shapes, there are things that can be said. <clears throat> so first of all, basically from Schutzenberger's fundamental work on jeu de taquin, which is that sliding procedure, um, and I guess the connection to RSK, it, uh, he, he proved that uh, in the case of P, a rectangle, so that's the shape we saw before, just a product of two chains. Well, if I do promotion, um, number of elements of P many times. So if it's an A by B rectangle, that's A times B. 
I get back where I started. So this is the order of promotion. It has a very small order compared to you know, the number of linear extensions or something. Um, so I guess I didn't show that here, but if, if we did this five more times, we would get back to the same tableau that we started with. Um, then um, Edelman and Green in their study of um, reduced decompositions of words in the symmetric group proved that um, for P, a, a staircase shape tableau, uh, sorry, a staircase shape diagram, Young diagram, um, if we do the same power of promotion, the number of elements of P, uh, well, we don't get exactly the identity, but what it is is the transpose of the staircase. So the staircase um, is a self conjugate shape and we can transpose it. Anyways, so if I do twice that many applications of promotion, I would get the identity. And then um, Heyman, I think answering some conjectures of Proctor and Stanley showed that for um, P a shifted trapezoid or a shifted double staircase, those were sh shapes I already mentioned. Um, again, we have promotion to the number of elements of P as the identity. And then in a follow-up paper with Kim, Heyman showed that um, these four shapes and shifted shapes are the only families which have good behavior of promotion. So which where you, you can say something about promotion to the number of elements of P. So he essentially completely classified the good behavior of promotion posets. <clears throat> and um, you can see then where I got this idea to look at the shifted double staircase. It's because I sort of knew already that these other shapes had product formulas and it was a natural one to look at next. And it, and it led to this heuristic. Um, How does that last paper define good promotion behavior? Yeah, so this part here, um, yeah. well, I guess it just, um, technically what they prove is that they, these are the only shapes where if you do this power of promotion, you either get the identity or transposition. So you could, um, yeah. Transposition being the- uh, Like a along. transpose matrix, yeah, exactly. Right. Um, and and then and the, the um, those are the only automorphisms of the post set. So those are in a sense the only things you could get that would be very nice, I guess. <clears throat> um, but now let me explain how the same heuristic, like good dynamics equals order polynomial product formula, can be applied in the reverse direction. So the forwards direction was we found a, we had a post set that had good dynamical behavior, and we gave it we found that it had an ordered polynomial product formula. The reverse direction is um, the opposite. We start with a, a post set that has a product formula, and then we show that it has good dynamics. Um, and this is answering a question. So Stanley wrote a survey on promotion and evacuation in 2009, and basically said, are there any other post sets P for which we can say something about promotion? Because these four families you know, are nice, but um, it's, yeah, maybe it would be fun, fun to have more examples. <clears throat> and um, so, yeah, we'll explore Stanley's question using the other direction of the heuristic. Um, so let's let Vn be the following post set. So this post set um, I call Vn because it's like a bunch of Vs stacked on top of each other. And um, this is what it looks like. It's not a Young diagram shape or, or shifted shape. So I can't draw it with boxes, but I draw its Hasse diagram. So um, Kreveros and Niederhausen in 1981 proved that this poly, this poset has a product formula for its order polynomial, and this is what it is. Um, so I learned of this from Ira Gessel, who has like a very exhaustive knowledge of obscure papers and combinatorics, I would say. I asked, a, I kind of asked on math overflow because I knew about this heuristic, and I was like, does anyone know any other examples of posets that have product formulas for? This um, their order polynomials, and he he responded with this really nice example, of this paper. <clears throat> um, so why why were they looking at this? I mean, why, where would you get this post set from? <clears throat> well, it's not too hard to see the linear extensions of this post set correspond to words, um, which have n a's, n b's, and n c's, and which have the property that every prefix in my word has um, at least as many A's as B's and at least as many A's as C's, although the number of B's and C's can change. Um, this is like a variant of the ballot sequences problem. So if you're used to um, 
Catalan numbers, Dick words, and, and the ballot sequences problem of Bertrand. Um, this is kind of a variant where there's three candidates instead of two, right? And um, Creveras in 1965 gave this kind of remarkable product formula for the number of these words, which I would call Creveras words now. You can see it's kind of similar in shape to the Catalan numbers. Um, let me just mention briefly that these words can also be thought of as walks in the non-negative orthant, which use um, these steps. So A is one, one, B is negative one, zero, and C is zero, negative one. And um, walks in the non-negative orthant were a topic that was like very heavily studied by people like Murray bousquet moulou and Marnie Mishna and others. They kind of studied all of the possible walks in the non-negative orthant. And anyways, these Creveras walks are kind of a fundamental example in that theory. Uh, and the fact that we get this product formula here is kind of a, an important, yeah, motivating example for studying walks like this. So from the analytic combinatorics point of view, people were interested in, in this poset, or at least its linear extensions. Um, but I got interested in um, looking at promotion on, on these linear extensions, or rather these, these words, right? So um, what does promotion acting on a Creveras word look like? Well, basically, we find the first place where our inequality is an equality. So we find the first place where we have either at least as many Bs as Cs, or at least as many um, Cs, I'm oh, sorry, at least as many Bs as As, or at least as many Cs as As. So I start with this word, I look at, that's my first place where I kind of reach an equality. And then I replace this B with an A and move the A, uh, sorry, I, I move the A here in the first position to where this B is, and then I bump the B to the, to the end of the word. So anyways, you can define a simple action on um, the words, which corresponds to promotion of linear extensions. Um, so this is the promotion. Uh, and then I keep sort of doing that. So this is the first place where I have as many Bs as As and so on. Maybe I do nine applications. Okay, I'm not gonna go through all of this, um, but what do I get? So I started with the word A, A, B, B, C, A, C, C, B. And I end with the word A, A, C, C, B, A, B, B, C. And um, you might notice that these two words are almost the same. I've just swapped the Bs and Cs, okay? <laughs> And that's what with Martin Ruby we show in general. So um, at the level of posets, that means that if I do the pth power of promotion on this BN poset, this Creveras poset, then, well, it's not the identity, but it's a, a automorphism of the poset reflection across the vertical axis of symmetry. So this is kind of the first new example of a family of posets, which has good um, promotion behavior. And, and so it, sort of in that sense answer Stanley's question. <clears throat> um, how do we prove, um, how do we prove this fact? Well, we use something called webs, which are um, certain planar graphs which, which were introduced by Cooperberg to study the representation theory of Lie algebras and quantum groups. Um, it was known previously by work of White, Peterson, Piliofsky and Rhodes and Tomachko that um, there's a connection between promotion of um, rectangular um, standard Young tableau and, and webs, rotation of webs in particular. So there's kind of, um, so I'm not telling you what webs are, but there are these kind of diagrams here that are um, planar graphs that uh, are trivalent. And anyways, there's a way of representing promotion of these kind of tableau as rotation of these kind of webs. And we do something very similar with um, the VN poset. We represent um, promotion of this VN poset's linear extensions as rotation of certain webs that are decorated with um, a, a proper three edge coloring. So we get some nice diagrams and we kind of model this complicated action by something simpler, just rotation. And that's how we kind of prove that theorem. Um, but I should mention that, that webs are important in, in algebra, right? They, they, um, they have some meaning in the representation theory of the algebra. We don't really understand the representation theory meaning of our 
connection here. And that would be something very interesting for me to think about, uh, or if anyone had any ideas. I mean, yeah. So, you know, Tableau are known to index basis of irreducible representations. I don't know what, what these VN linear extensions do. It could be something like, um, like Lee super algebra or something. I don't really know, but I have a feeling like something along that lines maybe. <clears throat> okay, so I have um, maybe a few minutes left. Uh, let me mention another uh, dynamics uh, of posets, which is also connected to this heuristic. Uh, and this is um, what's called row motion. So it was named kind of in analogy with pro motion. So here's another operation on posets, which in, enters into the dynamics heuristic. Um, so I'll use um, J of P to denote the set of order ideals of my poset P. So an order ideal is um, just a downwards closed subset. Um, so row motion is an operation on the set of order ideals. It sends an order ideal to the order ideal generated by the minimal elements of the complement of my order ideal. So that's kind of a mouthful, but let me show you an example. Um, so I'm looking at row motion on the two by two rectangle shape. Um, these yellow you know, subsets are the order ideals. There's six of them. And row here is showing you how this action works. So for this empty order ideal, its complement is everything. And the minimal element is just um, this guy here. And then I look at the order ideal that it generates. Then the complement of this single 10 is um, these three things. And the minimal elements are these two ones in the middle. And so that's the order ideal they generate. And I keep going. Eventually, I get the full thing. And then the full thing goes to the empty thing under row motion. Then there's another orbit of row motion, which um, is these two. Uh, order ideals that swap back and forth. So anyways, this is another action on another set of combinatorial objects associated to the poset. It's been studied by a lot of people, especially recently. There was, in fact, this um, conference at online workshop at Burrs just um, last week, last two weeks, which um, was a lot of people studying row motion. They really like it. But um, I can't really explain to you right now why it's, it's so interesting to study. But it also exhibits good behavior sometimes, like promotion. Um, so there's another way of describing um, row motion using toggling. So what is that? So um, if I have an element p of my poset and an order ideal i, then toggling at p is the operation of adding p if I can, and it stays in order ideal, removing it if I can, and it stays in order ideal, or otherwise doing nothing. And Cameron and Van der Floss showed that row motion can be realized by toggling from top to bottom my poset. So here's an example. Um, I'm toggling this order two element order ideal at this maximal element, but I can't add that because um, it wouldn't be an order ideal. It wouldn't be downwards closed. Then I toggle at this left thing, and I can add that, so I do. Then I toggle at the right element, and I can remove it, so I do. And then I toggle at the bottom element, and I can't remove that and stay in order ideal. So I just stay at this two element order ideal, and that's the um, row motion of my original one. And they showed that you can always compute row motion this way. In fact, that's why it's called row motion, is because you're going row by row by row of your poset toggling. That's the row motion. <clears throat> so. Um, so there's a natural identification between order ideals, downward closed subsets, and um, p partitions of height one, so bound of one, which is just the indicator function. So the ones um, are, are my order ideal. And um, about 10 years ago, Einstein and Prop introduced a piecewise linear extension of this row motion action, which um, is on the set of p partitions of height m for any p. And what is it? It's a composition of um, these toggles, but these toggles are now piecewise linear toggles. So how do piecewise linear toggles work? Um, well, if I toggle at some box of my poset, 
uh, I look at the bounds that my um, p partition must satisfy. So to be a p partition, it has to be um, at most c the minimum of c and d, and at least the maximum of a and b. And that defines some interval that my value x can can be in, and uh, I just flip the value in that interval. So I send it to um, its reflected image in this interval. So anyways, these piecewise linear toggles are some kind of piecewise linear involutions that extend the toggles from the combinatorial level. And you can just formally define row motion acting on um, these P partitions as the same composition from top to bottom of toggles. Oh yeah. By the way, it can—it's a piecewise linear map on the order polytope. So it—it, it, it, um, in fact, it's closely connected to Stanley's transfer map, which was what I talked about in the pre-seminar. Um, so this is a, again an action that people have been studying lately, and um, for instance, Grinberg and Roby showed that um, for many of the P that we've seen, like rectangles, shifted staircases, and staircases, um, there's good behavior of piecewise linear row motion in the sense that a small power of piecewise linear row motion is the identity. Um, but we can ask for even more than just um, periodicity. We can ask about the orbit structure. Um, and um, there's a very compact way to record the entire orbit structure of a cyclic action, which is via the cyclic sieving phenomena of Reiner, Stanton, White. Um, so what does that say? Um, so I say that a triple XCF exhibits the cyclic sieving phenomena where X is a finite set, C is a cyclic group action on this set, and F is some polynomial with non-negative integer coefficients. So that triple exhibits cyclic sieving if the number of fixed points of the kth power of the generator of my cyclic group uh, is given by plugging in the kth power of a primitive nth root of unity into my polynomial. So I can count fixed points by plugging roots of unity into my polynomial. That's the idea behind cyclic sieving. Um, so here's a sort of very prototypical example of cyclic sieving due to Reiner, Stanton, White, the original paper. If my set X is the set of size K subsets of one up to N, so binomial coefficient, many of those, and um, my cyclic group acts on X by just increasing the values by one mod N, um, then this exhibits cyclic sieving where the polynomial is the usual Q binomial coefficient. So here's an example of this. Um, so in the case n equals 4 and k equals 2, this is the q binomial. Uh, its evaluation at a zeroth root of unity is 6. At plus or minus i, like a first or a third root of unity is 0. And at a second root of unity, or um, I guess I mean a, a first or third power of a fourth root of unity is 0. And at um, a second power of a fourth root of unity, so at negative one, it's two. And what that's supposed to be telling me in the language of cyclic sieving is that um, there are six subsets which are fixed by zero powers. So that's just the identity. That's all of them. That's always true. And there are only two subsets which, when I add two mod n to them, I um, get back to where I started. So if I add two to one, I get three. If I add two to three, I get five, which mod four is one. And these are the two fixed points of the second power. And there's no fixed points of the first or third power. So this is like the prototypical example. One of the most beautiful examples was um, proved by Rhodes. And what he showed was that um, if my set is the p partitions of uh, in a box with the action of piecewise linear row motion, then that exhibits cyclic sieving where f is the thing that we saw at the beginning, the size generating function of plane partitions in a box. Um, so why is this so beautiful? Well, first of all, I can't explain the exact bijection, but it, it is a simple way of seeing that the case m equals 1 of this um, recovers the 
rotation subset CSP. Also, because this Q analog has a product formula, um, that implies that every symmetry class of my action has a product formula. So like if I wanted to know the number of plane partitions fixed by the fourth power of row motion, then that is some product formula. Like it, it has no big prime factors, really nice number. And also the techniques that went into this um, theorem are quite advanced. So Rhodes had to use Lustig's dual canonical basis of um, SLN representations to prove this CSP. So even though the statement just involves some kind of like elementary combinatorial actions with a simple enough, you know, um, definition, um, you have to use some really advanced tools from algebra to prove this. There's recently been another proof, um, which um, was using um, cluster algebras and the canonical bases from cluster algebras. But there's no elementary proof of this fact that is known. Um, okay, and so why do I mention all of this? Oh, sorry, go ahead. There's a question, yeah. So can I ask you a question about this formula? Mm -hmm. So is there some connection here? This product formula of McMahon, um, this is the same one as McMahon's formula, right? Mm -hmm. From the beginning. Mm -hmm. so you can view that formula as um, a bunch of Q binomial coefficients multiplied together, divided by another product of Q binomial coefficients multiplied together. And it, it's, like a, it's like a Q binomial coefficient binomial coefficient almost. OK. Like, yeah, I'm not sure I'm aware of that. There's many ways of representing this formula, um, but okay. I, I don't. I've not seen that one that uses many binomial coefficients. That's interesting, and it could be, um, yeah, that could be um, the start of like a, a elementary proof, I guess. Yeah, I was going to ask if there was some if that would be like a row by row instance, like if you could view that a formula like that as like doing row by row cyclic sibling. And anyway, anyway, we can, maybe we can Yeah, no, that's a really interesting question. I'd like to, I'd love to see that other representation of this formula, that, that sounds interesting. Okay. Okay, that's but um, just the punchline of why would I, why, why did I talk about all this stuff is, well, I have sort of a general connect, conjecture here uh, for cyclic sieving, which um, involves those posets P, which um, have good behavior of, of, of piecewise linear row motion. And, and again, to me, that's the same as the posets which have good order polynomials by my heuristic. And, and what does this conjecture say? The conjecture says, well, you just take the Q, uh, you just take the product formula for your, um, you take the product formula for your order polynomial and you do the natural Q analog. You just Qify every term in that product formula and that should give you the CSP polynomial for piecewise linear row motion acting on the set of these P partitions. Um, so I like this conjecture because it sort of precisely connects the dynamics, you know, dynamics of things acting on posets to order polynomial product formulas because it says that product formula gives you the CSP polynomial. Um, it's not even clear why this expression should be like a polynomial with non-negative integer coefficients for the various examples. And that's kind of related to proving these Q analogs. Um, so if you're interested in like just Q series in general, these are interesting examples of Q series. Um, so I, I think I should stop soon. So um, let me mention that this is still conjecture in general. There's many posets for which it's open, but um, it still has led me to sort of some cyclic sieving type results that are new and interesting that involve sort of symmetries of, of um, posets. Okay, so let me not focus on this, but again, yeah, you sometimes you can um, use advanced tools from algebra to prove um, cyclic sieving for, for these kind of product formula Q um, analogs. Okay, so what's the conclusion? So, um, so we've shown that this heuristic postsets with good dynamical properties equals postsets with order polynomial product formulas. You can use it in both directions to find new examples. Um, and again, there are not many examples of either of these kind of classes. So finding new examples is, is fun and interesting. Um, a lot of the conjectures are still open. So there's, if you're interested in like CSPs, this there's like a, well, I have this survey paper on this heuristic basically, and it has, you know, maybe seven cyclic sieving conjectures in it. So um, 
also, this was a point I didn't mention before, but it pointed the way to sort of interesting algebra underlying. We've seen that there's all these connections to like representation theory of the algebra and so on. So it's maybe an indication that your poset means something algebraically. Um, there's a bunch of things I didn't have time to discuss, um, but I won't. <laughs> and so let me just say thank you. And um, yeah, these slides are on my website and this archive references the survey paper. So. Well, thank you for that lovely talk. People can um, do your reactions. I'm going to unshare your screen so you can see their clapping faces. <laughs> and a uh, very nice talk. So there's there is some time for questions if people have questions. Unmute yourself. Well, my question sort of burning in my head is, I mean, how do you find an algebra to go with one of these families of posets? You know, where do we start looking for something for the VN poset unless you happen to recognize it? And maybe that's the point of the cluster algebra business, right? You sort of can grind out some algebra that way. Um, yeah, no, that's a good question. And I don't have an answer to it. Um, uh, for the shifted double staircase, Soichi has shown and, and was able to recognize that there's a connection to um, not what are called the intermediate symplectic groups, which are, um, so a symplectic group is, you know, the set of um, elements in GLN that preserve a non-degenerate symmetric bilinear form. But if you drop that non-degeneracy condition and just look at the matrices that preserve a, a symmetric bilinear or a skew symmetric form, I guess, right? Um, which is not necessarily, you know, has rank R, then you get a Lie group that um, interpolates between the general linear and the symplectic group. And um, th those are interesting Lie groups that they're not semi-simple or reductive, but they still have like a highest weight theory, which was developed mostly by Proctor. So anyways, some people who are know a lot about everything can find uh, the examples and see the connection to algebra, but it's beyond what I've been able to do so far. But yeah, that's something in a direction I'm definitely interested in. <clears throat> yeah, so what else did you try like generalizing the Vs? I mean, Ws? <laughs> okay, that's a good question is like, what? why can't I just look at sort of, yeah. you know, three prongs or four prongs? Well, it turns out that um, the product formula breaks, like you don't have a product formula for the number of linear extensions even. And uh, the people who like walks, um, like that sort of analytic combinatorics crowd, no, so have so they would say like that the Kreveras walks, you know, in three dimensions lack of product formula. So they they were aware of this fact. I mean, they still try to study them to some degree, but uh, it might be related to like a lot of the time things break down when you go to higher dimensions. So you know, two dimensional models are sometimes solvable via these like physics techniques, and it just might be that in three dimensions things are bad, and as you go up in dimensions it just gets worse. In comparison with the standard Young tableau, when you go to the skew case, right, you don't, you no longer get a product formula, but you get a sum of products. Sure, right, and that's a big topic as well, obviously. But, yeah. Um, in some sense, I'm looking at, you know, the most, the best behave of all things, which is like, even just a subset of, of shapes, of Young diagram shapes. <clears throat> Very cool. Okay, other questions? Mentioned for uh, for general process uh, like, uh, promotion relating to your chaotic. Has there been study of like what? Oh, probably can't hear me. Sorry, I got you. It's a little hard to hear. Um, I I can sort of hear, but it's very quiet. Uh. Um. Okay. Yeah. So you mentioned that for general post sets, uh, this promotion and row motion behavior is chaotic. Um, has there been study on sort of what this chaos is? Yeah, that's reasonable too. To kind of just show how bad things can get, and um, that's not really something that I've looked at much. Um, I guess what is known is you could so this piecewise linear action you can view as a, a on the entire order polytope, like it's a piecewise linear action on you know, or all of sort of all of Euclidean space. And it's known that for most posets, um, it's not even going to have finite order. Like 
it, it will no, um, no power is the identity. So, um, okay. Yeah. Obviously, when we're acting on a finite set, then right. that's how yeah. it does. But it, yeah, that's sort of representative of just like what's going on is that really the only reason you get back to where you started is because you have to at some point. Is it purely periodic, or does it, or um, is a is like is promotion on a is on a post? Is it purely periodic, or do, or are there tails like or leading heads where? Sort of like if you can, you start with uh, it's one. An invertible, it's an invertible map. So. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. So yeah, it, it breaks into some orbits, but. Okay. 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 Last call for questions. Okay. Well, if not. Then yes, I have a, one question. Good. Yeah, Soichi? Hi there, by the way. Hi, yeah. So, does the uh, low motion on, uh, this was low motion on the double staircase shape has a. Okay. Uh, you're, for me, you're cutting in and out. I don't know if that's for other people as well. Uh. Yes, I lost oh, sorry. So if you could hear us, maybe type into the chat if we're having so, trouble. The, uh... oh, sure. I, I think you're, so should, I think you're asking about row motion on the double staircase, right? Um, so, yeah, so the, that's right. Um, so does it have a nice order formula? Only, um, the only case, so uh, this is something I glossed over, but row motion never behaves well if your POSA is not graded. And most of the time, the double staircase is not a graded poset. The okay. extreme examples of when <clears throat> k is zero or k is um, n or n minus oh. one. Yeah. So beyond that, I don't think it behaves well. Yeah. Because it's not graded. But yeah, that's a good question. Oh, OK. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, it's a... All right, then. Well, let's thank our speaker one more time. Nice talk, Sam. Thank you very much. Thank you.